All right, as I said, that's the last sitting day before we will all go to a vote in the voice referendum now in 30 days' time. Joining me to discuss that and a whole lot more, National Weekend Political Editor for the News Corp Papers, James Campbell. James, welcome as always. I want to start with a National Club uh, Press Club address today from Jacinta Nampajimpa Price. She is, of course, the Shadow Minister for Indigenous Australians. Have a listen to this. Do you believe the history of colonisation continues to have an impact on some Indigenous Australians? Uh, no. Very... I'll be honest with you, no. I don't think so. A positive impact? Absolutely. If we keep telling Aboriginal people that they are victims, well, we are effectively removing their agency uh, and then provide, giving them the expectation that someone else is responsible for their lives. That is the worst possible thing you can do to any human being, is tell them that they are a victim without agency. So I reckon we've both seen plenty of these speeches, James. That was one of the best I have seen. And I tell you, it was a masterclass when it came to questions from the media. So there was no weasel words, there was no uh, clever crafted, crafted lines. She took every one of those questions head on. She said what she thought. And frankly, she hit most of those lefty journalists. That bloke was from The Guardian. She hit them between the eyes. What did you think? I think her great advantage is that she knows what she thinks. She believes what she says. And she is objects to what is proposed in the country on principle. She's not saying... I, I might support some version of this. She says that we should all be treated the same. She is a classic Liberal, and as such, it was great refreshing to hear those sorts of sentiments expressed so openly. I think the other thing about Senator Price that is sort of threatening to the leftist consensus in this country is that, unlike a lot of people who say, well, the problems in Indigenous communities are essentially the problems of colonialism. She says, really, in many cases, the problems in Indigenous communities are a product of pre-colonial societies, that they essentially carry a, an original sin, if you like, um, and that they, they need to reform themselves. That's a much, much more confronting thing for people to have to, lefties to have to listen to, than to say that things are bad because, uh, you know, the white fellas did awful things to Indigenous Australians. Look, you're right to point that out because her, her great criticism, and even today she's had a lived experience of that in her own family, is the customary law practices, particularly in relation to women, uh, young marriage, child marriage, multiple marriages, uh, how children are treated. And I think that's going to be a real feature of her time uh, in this important role on the coalition front bench after the referendum. Let's go to... to I'll come back to that in a moment with uh, Michaelia Cash, who was there at the press club today. But let's talk about this Senate inquiry into the whole Commonwealth Games fiasco. It is now recommended that the federal government should actually step in and salvage the 2026 Games. Uh, we know Daniel Andrews really didn't want any other state to pick it up. Do you think it's likely that the Commonwealth might step in? No. I, I, I think it's unlikely at this point that the federal taxpayer will be putting its hand into its pocket for this. Um, the, Victoria looked at it and realised it couldn't be done for the money that they had opted to do it for. Other people have looked at it. Um, I mean, I, the best that one... I suspect might happen is we might make a token contribution if anybody else were to pick it up. But, I, it, you know, we've got the Olympics mm. coming. Um, love the dear old Commonwealth Games, but, you know, this, it's a bit of an orphan. No-one else wants it, and why should we? All right, let's go to election donations because uh, <laughs> there's a big move going on in the Albanese government. They want to reform the threshold at which once you uh, make a donation, the threshold at which it's got to be publicly reported under electoral laws. Now, currently, that's uh, $14,500. They want to drop that right down to $1,000. Well, it's got all the Teals nervous because uh, we know where they get their money from. Uh, they reckon it's going to impede their ability to challenge the two major parties. Also, too, is a push for the ACT and the NT to get two more senators. So right now, I remind everyone, they get two senators. Those senators are up every time there's a federal election for the House. Unlike other senators, they're only up every six years in that cycle. 
but they want to take, the Labor Party's talking about taking the ACT and the NT from two senators to four senators each. Now, when I do the math on four senators each in the two territories, that'd basically give the Labor Party a working left-wing majority in every single parliament. Now, what do you think of both of these things? Well, I think the first thing to be said about this is that there's not a great deal, I suspect, that the Liberal National Parties can do about this if the government wants to do it. Uh, they have a majority in the Senate for whatever they're proposing in this space. So the Liberal Party has to work out, and the National Party have to work out, do they do a deal with Don Farrell and the government over uh, spending caps and electoral reforms and things like that? Because if they don't do a deal with him, mm. he'll go and do a deal with the Pococks and the Greens of this world. I, myself, think that the coalition should be radical about this and say, let's not expand just uh, the, the territories, let's expand the parliament. We've now got a, a point with 151 seat or whatever it is, House of uh, Representatives, uh, which is... The seats are very, very big now compared to when the last time it was expanded in 1984. It's become much, much harder uh, for MPs to realistically service the seats that they've got, especially in country seats. The Liberal Party and the National Party would gain, I think, by a one-off injection of talent uh, at this... At, at, it were, were the Parliament to be expanded now. Yeah, but hang on, James, I'm the jumping in there. I'm jumping in there, sure. You might... I've got mm -hmm. to jump in there, mate, sorry. Yeah. But you might get more people in the lower house... Yes, you'll have better representation. Mm -hmm. I think the point you make about mm -hmm. country seats is right. But you could then have a coalition government elected with an unworkable majority in the upper house, no majority in the upper house, sorry, a block on the left against you. Now, it's one thing to get into power, as, as Tony Abbott saw in 2013. It's another thing to get your mandate sure. through the parliament. Oh, I Correct. think the price in the Senate's too high to pay. I think it's too high to pay. But what are you going to do about it? But, uh, but, but what are you going to do about it? If Don Farrell and Anthony and Albanese decide it. they want to expand the Senate at this time, they, they, the legislation is there. For, they, they, they'll have a majority to do it. So you've got to think hard about extracting something from them. They're not a, it's not a great option, but they're in a very weak position here, Peter. Very weak. I think I'd fight it. They can only get it through, of course, the government if they get the support of the crossbench. I know there's vested interest there in the ACT and the NT, but... There's plenty of other votes across the crossbench. What they only, just before they we only go, need one... Apart from the Greens, they only... Sorry, go on. Go on. Sorry. Sorry, right. we'll come back to that one. I want to get into Richard Miles because I've got uh, uh, Senator James Patterson waiting to get into this issue about Boko Haram and Islamic State. Richard Miles was supposed to turn up the detail of his VIP flights, his, his use of uh, RAF jets like a, a flying Uber from Geelong. He's the first bloke or first defence minister in I don't know how many decades who hasn't put the material on the table that everybody else has. He didn't do that today. He hid behind so-called security advice. I've said before, I worked for a defence minister. I do not buy it. This is nearly three and a half, four million dollars worth of flights in one year with his golf clubs in the back. Surely the media is not going to let him get away with this, James. First thing to say is it's actually probably twice that much because the only flights we can see at the moment are the flights that he was actually on. The flights that where the plane went to collect him, the so-called ghost flights, are not counted in that money. So the, 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 the scale uh -huh. is huge. His behaviour over this is... Sorry? Keep going. Oh, well, I was going to say, his behaviour over this is, is completely bizarre because the thing to understand about this is sooner or later, uh, the, the Independent Parliament Expenses Authority, which has apparently got some problems with its computers, uh, again run by Don Farrell, Don Farrell's going to fix his computer and the IPIA is going to start spitting out the reports on, on Richard Miles and everybody else's uh, ordinary non-VIP flight spending. And at that point, everybody will be able to see how often he's been using commercial flights, and by deduction, working out what, he, what he's been using the VIP for. Now, his office, when you talk to them about this, you say, well, why don't you just get ahead of this and just release uh, this stuff? They say, oh, we're fine. There's no, nothing to see here. It, 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 it's, it's, we're, we're trapped by some security review. I don't buy it either. I think it's very weird. I don't understand why the coalition agreed to water down the Senate's um, 
uh, demand that the that the that the review that the documents just be produced by giving him the weasel words on security. I suspect that there's a little bit of reluctance amongst some people on the coalition to go to really go after Miles on this. They quite like Miles. Uh, Miles is seen as sound on things like AUKUS, where some other members of the government are clearly mm. uh, not sound on AUKUS, and so they, you know, they they don't really want to play hard. Uh, whereas others, I think, that can smell a little bit of blood on the water in the water here, and think they need to uh, get a bit nastier with him. Uh, I, I think that you know, if, if if there's enough, if the, when we come back in October, if Miles hasn't uh, had a had a rethink on this, the the Senate should revisit this decision over whether or not, uh, over these uh, over the document, and they should really dig their heels in over this. They shouldn't let him get away with it. Well, you write for the biggest papers in the country every Sunday. I hope you keep it up too, James Campbell. Thank you as always.